Hi folks, this is College Algebra Checkpoint Quiz 6.3. Number one, we're asked to solve an exponential equation. And so the first thing we look for when solving an exponential equation is if it's convenient to express both sides with the same base. So here we have something expressed as base 2. Here this is expressed as base 7. It's not entirely convenient to express 7 as a power of 2 or 2 as a power of 7. And so in that case we're going to just pull out the logarithm. So we'll take the natural log of both sides. And once again any logarithm will do. But I prefer the natural log. Uh, because base E is what comes up in a lot of the applications. Okay, so why are we taking the log of both sides? We're taking the log of both sides so we can take advantage of the power rule for logarithms. So we can bring the exponents down front. So we're going to get 3x plus 1, that entire exponent, times the natural log of 2, equals... 1 minus x, that exponent, times the natural log of 7. Let me go ahead and distribute the natural log of 2. Remember, the natural log of 2 is a real number, so we distribute it just like we would any other real number. So 3x natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 2, and we distribute the natural log of 7 minus x natural log of 7. Now we have to keep the eyes on the prize here. We're solving for x. So where is the x in this equation? This term contains an x, and this term contains an x. And the power on the x in each of these terms is x to the first power. So even though it looks more complicated, what we have on our hands here is a linear equation in terms of x. And how do we solve linear equations in terms of x? We get all the x's on one side, everything else on the other, factor and divide. So that's what we're going to do. We'll add x natural log 7 to both sides. And then we'll subtract off the natural log of 2 from both sides. So I'm going to get 3x natural log of 2 plus x natural log of 7 equals natural log of 7 minus natural log of 2. I have an x in common to both of these terms, so I'll factor it out. And I'm left with 3 natural log of 2 plus natural log of 7 equals natural log of 7 minus natural log of 2. And so for the grand finale, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 natural log of 2 plus natural log of 7. And so I get from my final answer, x equals natural log of 7 minus natural log of 2 divided by 3 natural log of 2 plus natural log of 7. And this is the exact answer. If you wish, you can use your calculator to get a decimal approximation for this. Um, if you really want to challenge yourself to see how good you are with properties of logs and exponents, you can go back and put this answer in to check it into the original equation. Um, that would take you a fair amount of time, but uh, by the end of it, you'll really have uh, practiced your log and exponential properties. Well, that'll do it for number one. All right, number two, we're asked to solve this exponential inequality. 10 minus 3e to the negative t less than or equal to 9. So we're going to solve this inequality the same way we solve any nonlinear inequality. We're going to use a sign diagram. So we'll subtract 9 from both sides. 
and get 0 on the other. And I'm going to call this my function f of t. And I'm going to build a sine diagram for f of t. And then I'm going to look to where the f of t is less than or equal to 0. All right, so the first consideration for the sine diagram is domain. Do I have any domain issues here? Do I have any denominators? No. Do I have any even indexed radicals like square roots or fourth roots? No. Do I have any logarithms? No. So my domain is all real numbers, and so there's no exclusions due to that. The second thing I look for are the zeros of the function. So I have to set the function f of t equal to 0 and solve that. All right, so I've got 1 minus 3e to the minus t equals 0. My first task here is to isolate the exponential. So i got to get uh, this by itself. So I'll add 3e to the negative t to both sides. And I get 1 equals 3e to the minus t. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Turn things around a bit. I get e to the negative t equals 1 third. And then I can take the natural log of both sides. What's especially convenient here is the natural log is log base e. So these two functions undo each other. I'm just left with negative t, natural log of a third. And I can divide or multiply both sides by negative 1, and I get t equals negative natural log 1 third. Now, since we're going to be putting these things on a number line for test values, I want to simplify this as much as I can. So I can use log properties to write this as negative natural log of 3 to the minus 1 power, and then use the power rule to bring the negative down front to cancel the negative that's already there. And so I get t equals natural log of 3. All right, so now it's time to make the sine diagram. For f of t. And the only critical value I get on here is the natural log of 3. And I know the function is 0 there. Now I need to pick test values around it. So one value I could pick, um, you know, keeping in mind the natural log is an increasing function, I can pick the natural log of 2 or the natural log of 1, and I'm going to pick the natural log of 1 over here, because the natural log of 1 is none other than our friendly number 0. So that'll be one test value. And then over here I'll pick the natural log of 4. So let's plug these into the function. Let me plug 0 into my f of t. So here's the f of t. It's 1 minus 3e to the negative t. So it'd be 1 minus 3e to the negative 0. So it's 1 minus 3e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. And so I get a negative 2. So it's negative over here. And now I'm going to substitute in the natural log of 4. do it down here. So it's 1 minus 3e to the negative natural log of 4. So I want to be able to use the inverse properties of the exponential function base e and the logarithm base e. But to do that I have to take care of the negative first. So I'm going to bring the negative up as the exponent. And that's going to give me the natural log of 4 to the negative 1 power, which is 1 over 4. And so I get 1 minus. Now I can take advantage of the inverse property here. And I get 1 minus 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth, which is a positive. So now I can write down my answer. I'm going to just squeeze it in over here. I go back, this was the f of t, and my original inequality, I'm looking where the f of t is less than or equal to 0. 
it's going to be less than 0 where I have a negative, and it's equal to 0 at the natural log of 3. So my final answer is negative infinity to the natural log of 3, including the natural log of 3. And so that'll do it for number 2.